Hello and welcome to the second video in the Baselight Tools series. Today we're going to look at stabilizing shots within Baselight. So the first step to stabilizing your footage in Baselight is if you add a transform strip. You can either do that with the insert transform strip or the shortcut for that is shift T. Up the top left hand side of your display in the parameters view you should see that we have um, our image transformation settings. Down the bottom here we have a tracking and stabilization subpanel. So the first thing that you'll notice, three types of trackers that we can create in order to stabilize our shot. The one point tracker will only allow you to stabilize the X and Y axis, um, but the two point and the area tracker will allow you to track the X, the Y, the rotation and the scale. If we click one of these here, you can see that it creates a tracker strip in the timeline and it creates a little box in our image display and we now have the tracker and the parameters view. So let's break down this window a little bit. You can see that we have our area track selected, and that's selected here. We have our tracker name, which we can copy to the clipboard, and we can go ahead and we can delete it. We can add another area tracker. I'm gonna jump down to the tracking section, and you can see that we can track forwards or backwards. Down here in the options, we have a few tick boxes. So there's some options here that we can finesse. But for now, I'm just gonna go ahead, and I'm gonna shift my area tracker to incorporate the entire picture pretty much and I'm going to go ahead and hit track forwards okay so to properly analyze this we're going to go ahead into our cursor and add ourselves a guide so I've got a full area guide here and uh, it looks like it's introducing some blanking I have the transform alarm overlay set to on the transform alarm overlay shows whenever there's blanking in the image. So if I go ahead and turn this off, you can see um, we have blanking in our image. So I'm going to leave this on. Um, so if we click our transform strip and back to our tracking and stabilization subpanel, you can see that it has the name of our tracker. We have it to stabilize. We are applying the stabilize to the scaling, rotation, X translation, and Y translation. So for example, I could just untick this. I'm actually going to turn off the scaling and the rotation. So it should just be stabilizing my y-axis. And you can see with the little red overlay box, you can see that now the stabilizer is just affecting the y-axis, which is, which is what I want. Now, to eliminate this blanking that's being introduced, I could uh, always just go into my uh, image transformation settings and scale in my image to fix that. But I'm gonna undo that with Command-Z. And if you go over to the camera subsection of the transform strip, you can see that there's a remove image borders toggle. If you click that, you can see it automatically will eliminate the blanking from your stabilize. So that's a really nice way to just immediately um, eliminate any blanking. And again, I will try and give you some playback on this laptop, but it's going to struggle. So you can see the uh, overlay, the red box uh, working and that's uh, stabilizing the y-axis of this shot. Okay, so that's a good that's a good effort. We'll add one more, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit Shift T to add a transform strip. I'm gonna add myself an area tracker, extend out the box, go ahead and track forwards. Okay, cool, so now I'm gonna go into my transform strip, into my camera setting, and just remove the image borders here. And you can see that we've scaled in to eliminate any of that blanking. So you can see that as I play this down, it's very um, wobbly and fluidy and it doesn't look very nice. So this one is a little bit of a harder stabilize. The three things I could fiddle with and try and play with is these three sliders here. The restore motion, restore shake and noise, and shake noise frequency. So the restore motion slider tries and brings back some of the slower, smoother, uh, underlying camera movements um, that have been removed by the stabilization. So it's a way to uh, retain your camera move or retain the general feel or flow of the shot. So for example, if you have a panning shot going from left to right, if you increase this slider, um, that natural slower camera movement will be restored while still removing some of the higher frequency judders. The restore shake noise slider kind of does the opposite and it brings back some of the higher frequency, smaller judders, the more random motion. If you want to bring some of that back, the natural higher frequency camera movement, uh, you can increase this slider. 
and the shake noise frequency slider down the bottom is sort of your relationship between the lower frequency and the higher frequency movement. So for example, if you had a very consistent and high frequency judder on the camera, kind of like this shot here with the uh, quite fast up and down movement, uh, you might want to bring the shake noise frequency uh, slightly further down the bottom. You can experiment with the slider and see what frequencies you prefer for certain types of shots. But this, along with your two slides up the top, give you a lot of flexibility. Um, note as well that these can also be keyframed. Um, so if there's a particularly high frequency judder at the beginning of your shot, and then it goes away and you need to stabilize a camera drift, um, you could keyframe the motion and shake noise to really key into that and get exactly what you want out of the stabilize tool. That's the basics. Uh, sorry I couldn't really show you um, the stabilize in action. My laptop is slowly dying. Uh, if you enjoyed this one, make sure to check out my other videos. Chuck us a like and a subscribe. And uh, yeah, if you really want, go ahead to my Patreon and uh, chuck me a few dollars. That would be great. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.